rainbows are currently everywhere. Oh yeah. On everything. I, I saw like it. it was like a, a rubbish truck that went by that had rainbows emblazoned across it. Uh, You're seeing like I water love my bottles. Ally trash bag. I relate to that. That's me. That's representation for me. Look at that bin with its rainbow. <laughs> hey, how you doing? But everyone is loving rainbows right now. And some are saying I don't like rainbows. Look no? at look at me. I'm wearing stripes right now. Do you see any colour? <laughs> no. I did it in my whole YouTube video. I did a whole thing with the lights and the pride colour flags behind me. People were like, I love this new colourful aesthetic. I was like, oh, don't get used to it. And I was making a point. Why don't you like rainbows? What? Oh, no, I'm just not a very colourful person. I mean, we can get into, oh, do I wear a lot of black because I have emotional issues that I'm not confronting? This, I mean... isn't, this isn't the time for that right now. We have to stay on topic here. But this is the whole thing. You know, if every single corporate logo has a, a pride flag makeover, what does that mean? Is it too much? Is there an element of it that's a bit like, whoa, we're going to be cool just by putting a rainbow on it? Yes, but, you know, whatever. Until the revolution happens, you're just going to have to get over it, I guess. But what if the companies don't actually support the LGBT community? Well, that's, that's the thing. You know, if you see the history of a company and they have done something in the past or they've done something recently and they've got a pride flag on their logo, that's when you say, this is what you need to work on. You've just got to hold people accountable. But the fact that there's a pride flag there in the beginning is not something to take for granted. <laughs> there's a huge discussion at the moment around oh, yeah. LGBT education in schools. The entire argument from some people here is let's just pretend that gay people don't exist. Or let's just pretend that this child won't realise that they're trans when they get older. And that is just denying reality. We're literally discussing the option of saying let's just choose not to acknowledge that all these people exist and to tell other people in their community to accept them. And that's just completely ridiculous because it's gonna happen. You know, people are gonna grow up and they're gonna be gay. Some people are gonna grow up and they're gonna question their gender identity. So you have a choice, which is, are these people gonna be in accepting, loving environments or are they not? And that's just that. As a online influencer, mm -hmm. do you feel that you provide the LGBT education that some schools won't? Definitely, I mean, this is what the internet and social media has become. Entire communities of young people form to create spaces where they can talk about things because they're just not getting it from the real world. You know, if a gay kid has questions about sex education, then they're probably not gonna find that in their school. So then they go to somewhere on the internet. If someone just wants to say, I want a community of people that can tell me things to understand my gender identity, there is no way that they'd get that from, you know, traditional society or real life. So yes, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, these are the places that these young people go to to find a community and to actually learn about how to exist as the person they are, because at the moment, this isn't what formal education is actually providing. And how does that make you feel that you're providing that education? I mean, it's overwhelming. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm like, oh, yikes, am I a role model? Didn't ask for this. Um, oh God, I've made so many mistakes. But um, I, I think that I, I've lived a life experience and one of the biggest services I have to offer is I've made so many mistakes. So if I can just talk about that and impart some knowledge and just say, this is what I learned from going through something. And if there's a young person that goes, that's a good point. And then they don't have to go through something that I went through. That's not me trying to do something. That's just a byproduct of my life and me just talking about it. But that's by far the most amazing and impactful thing I can offer. What was it like clicking upload on that video? Very overwhelming. But because this was something that I had spent so long working on and it just completely consumed me for weeks at a time, I probably spent, you know, 12 hours a day for an entire week in front of a computer editing it. It was just like a train that was about to run over a cliff edge and then it was just an upload. So it wasn't this big emotional relief moment. It was more like a, a marathon and I'd literally just crossed the finish line and then I was one of those people that just fell on the floor and went, Ugh. that's what it was like. <laughs> and then the reactions, what was that like? That was, I mean, it was hard for me to really try and guess how it would be received or how many people would care. I knew that I was coming into this from a place of having a lot of followers already that I knew were, you know, nearly all lovely supportive people. So I knew that a lot of it would be positive. I knew that putting something out there randomly on the internet, there'd probably be some, you know, <laughs> some negativity from some people. But what I didn't think is that so many people would watch it. Um, I just think that's maybe a self-belief thing. I don't know, it like, I was thinking, is it that interesting 
somebody really? coming out in 2019. I thought, oh, maybe this will be slightly more popular than the usual comedy video I do, but I had no idea. So this is by far, unimaginably, the biggest impact or most popular thing that has ever happened in my life. And how does that make you feel? Well, happy because I worked so hard on it for so long. <laughs> but really, it's, you know, the reason I made this video was, you know, part of it was for myself, but one of the reasons why I worked so hard on it and I cared so much about it was I say a lot of things that I think are important points that people need to hear. So it just made me happy at the end of the day knowing that I haven't just got a lot of people to laugh at a video that I've made. I have potentially had an impact on eight and a half million people. I could have changed their perspectives. I could have completely altered the way that they see these things. And that is, at the end of the day, what's the most satisfying to me. But what was happening behind the scenes? What was going through your mind when all of these years of not actually saying what you said in that video? It is bizarre for me because it feels like my whole life, I've just had this glass wall in front of me. And so much of my personality, so much of my life, especially with me being a comedian on the internet with so many followers, people feel like they know me so well, and they do, but there's this one big part of it that was just this murky, you know, like a mirror covered with fog, and it's just now, there's, there's nothing, there's no obstacles in my life anymore. I literally feel like I've been walking around in a glass box, even though people could see through it, and now it's for the first time I'm actually walking around open in the world. So just emotionally, just as a person existing in this world, it feels completely different now that it's just, not, I'm not holding this big secret anymore. It's a very tough question, but why did it take so long? Part of it was that a lot of people in my life knew, you know, I had friends, I had, you know, random strangers, people that I worked with, a lot of people kind of saw things I said and did and had an idea, but I wasn't clear about it. But then there were certain people in my life that had no idea. I had friends that honestly would be like so are you gonna get a girlfriend at some point and i'd be like so you have no idea even <laughs> though we've been friends for five years and my family literally they, they didn't know and you know i was 27 and i just hadn't told my family at all yet so it didn't matter if i was living this life because my family had literally no idea at all so for me this wasn't just oh i'm gonna write a funny comedy video about coming out and being gay it's to make this video I'm gonna have to confront all of these things that I've been putting off my entire life. I realized I have to come out to my family before I do this. And I think it took me about six months of actively trying just to muster up the coming. I thought I was gonna do it at Christmas. I was thinking Boxing Day. Really? Going around the, yeah, yeah not to be dramatic or anything. <laughs> I thought, you know, Boxing Day, day after Christmas, don't wanna make it all about me on Christmas dinner. I'm not, I'm not gonna do it like cutting in the turkey. I'm gay, everybody, because that, you know, no need to be that theatrical. I thought, you know, Boxing Day, having some nibbles, wait for an awkward silence, and then just, you know, calmly just do so it. You know. <laughs> and, okay. you know, my family situation, I feel quite lucky because, you know, it's the world is a very different place to what it was 15 years ago. I didn't know how I felt you know, when I was a young teenager, I didn't want to tell anyone about this. I felt that times have changed enough. I know my yeah. family well enough that I felt in that moment they wouldn't reject me in a violent way. I thought it maybe it'll be a bit awkward. It's just going to be a shock when you tell people, you know, anything about your sexuality. I wasn't expecting any real bad reaction, but it was just terrifying because just being so emotionally vulnerable, telling them something about me that I can't change and then seeing whether in that moment they choose to accept it or not is that's terrifying. That's what it is about coming out. It's you're telling the world, this is a part of me that I can't change and you might just not accept it. And then what do you do in that situation, especially if it's your family? And like I said, I, I felt like they were going to react well, but it was still terrifying. So I just I couldn't. And then I tried again when it was my mum's birthday in February. I tried Her birthday? Again. Yeah, I, again, you I'm just trying to drama. ruin everything. Gosh. Yeah, But every time, three or four times I saw my family, I was like, and no, it's not happening. And it got to the point where I was like, this is actually starting to, this is going to be ridiculous. It's going to be four and a half years before I can tell anybody this thing, just because I can't tell my mum and my grandma. So then I did the most awkward on brand thing for me, um, which was to just tell them in an email. What? Li yeah, I literally just emailed my family because it got so ridiculous. It went on for so long and I was just too scared. So I literally sent them an email and I was like, basically, I'm gay. And then I just went send. And then I thought, look, this is just the start of the conversation. I'm sure we'll go on about this, but I just need to rip the plaster off. Yeah. And that was the terrifying moment. So 
I know it's weird and I know it makes me this awkward and you know I owed it to my family to give them a real moment but I just couldn't care any longer. I it is interesting like though. Send. There's like this Hollywood dream that you sit down with your family around oh, the table. Hands. Yeah. yeah. Just like just so we all know. Oh, have a I'm good gay. cry. That is the complete opposite of me. I'm like. And most of us. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't connect with me emotionally. That's not how I vibe. But it worked. You know what I mean? And like I said, it was the beginning of the conversation. So I clicked send on the email, just closed my laptop, frisbeed it across the room. Like, there we go. I'm just going to wait for the interaction now. Got a phone call from my mum. And, you know, this is the thing. I came out to them in 2019 and the world is a very different place to what it was even in the 90s or the noughties when I was a teenager. When I was a teenager, I did not think I could talk to anyone about this. So I didn't. And that's why I internalised all of it. I did not feel like I could talk to my family. I don't know what they would have said, but society and the way I was being conditioned was telling me it was such a bad thing that I needed to be afraid of and ashamed of that I just thought, I'm just not going to tell them. And, you know, that is something that I just carried inside me until I was 27, which sounds completely ridiculous, but that's how I lived for so long. So I'm also 27. We've both had very different coming out journeys mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there will be people out there who haven't come out yet at our age or even later. Yeah. What would you say to those people? I'd say that firstly, you've got to be authentic in your life. If you, if you really want to be happy, if you want that moment of serenity where you can just deeply exhale and go, this is who I am, this is fine. At some point you need to come out. And that's a hard thing to say to people because based on people's life experiences, it might be difficult. You might think that people in your life will reject you. You could lose your job. You might be in danger, depending on the environment that you're in. But I just say you need to do everything you can to get to a place where you can be who you are and you have people in your life that love you for that person. Because when you say, you know what, it's fine. I, I can just get on with it. It's okay as it is. If, you know, if I'm lying about this one thing, it, it's not. So, I, you know, it's hard. And that's the thing. It, it's so easy to say, just come out. That's the answer. It'll be fine. And I think we both know mm -hmm. that's not how it works. But y you just have to. You know, it was the struggle for me for 27 years. People look at me and they're like, okay, I'm a, a white, able-bodied, gay boy from a relatively middle class background that now, age 27, has this incredibly successful career in life and it was still torture for me. So, you know, if it was this hard for me, then you can't imagine how hard it would be for everyone else.